how much money is involved in U.S. politics? Well, let's ask Democratic National Committee member Yasmin Tayeb. Thank you for joining us. It's so really good to be here. So as we know, we're now less than a year away. So if we can try and estimate, how much of U.S. candidates in these super PACs spent on some of these digital ads so far? So, so far, uh, candidates running for the presidential nomination, as you noted, have spent over $100 million on digital ads. So the majority of that, as you likely know, has been spent on Facebook. Uh, around 30 million or more, a little over 30 million has been spent on Google ads, and uh, around 5 million has been spent on uh, Twitter. And as uh, we all know, Twitter released their new policy at the end of last month uh, prohibiting uh, the, the running of any political ads on their platform. And we certainly saw quite an uproar when Twitter did that. What's your reaction to Twitter taking that stance? So, you know, I, I respect the position that they took. And while there was quite a bit of uproar about the, in response to their decision, the, the vast majority of the money that is spent on digital ads is a very, very small chunk of it is spent on Twitter's platform. Again, you know, for the presidential, only around 5 million in the 2018 uh, midterms, around 3 million were spent on Twitter out of over 600 million uh, total that was spent on uh, digital ads. So I, I don't think that it will have that much of an impact. I, you know, if we see a similar outcome from Facebook, I do believe right. that that will, that will be much different. And we did see Google joining the fray on Wednesday. Google announced it would start to rein in its political business. Why do you think that might be significant since this is a search engine versus, say, a social media company? Sure. So, again, these are platforms that the reason why a lot of the candidates take advantage is because, you know, these are where a lot of the voters spend most of their time. So, for instance, you know, the reason why myself and many of my colleagues would probably be, you know, kind of taken back a little bit if, if Facebook made a similar declaration, even though, so one, I do believe that Facebook needs to, as, as a company for their policy, they need to ensure that all political ads are being fact-checked and that they do not post any disinformation at all on their platform. Um, if they're not willing to do that, then certainly I think the next step, this is why advocates and elected officials have called on Facebook to do, to pass the similar policy as Twitter. However, the impact of that would be detrimental on specifically on progressive candidates, on insurgent candidates who rely on platforms like Facebook to be able to reach out to grassroots donors, gra voters, and potential volunteers. And you raise an interesting point because oh, you've run for office yourself in Virginia before. So to what degree does the sort of access to funding in these digital ads really affect the sort of diversity in terms of the field of candidates who can make the final cut? Incredibly important. So our campaign, similar to insurgent candidates, like Senator Bernie Sanders, Senator Elizabeth Warren, our campaign was not accepting a single dime from corporate PACs. We had donors from every single state in the country, and this was a state Senate race in 2019 in Virginia. And the reason why we got so much interest in our campaign was because of the way we ran our campaign. It was strictly a grassroots funded campaign. We relied on grassroots donors. Those donors, we turned them into supporters and into voters. So, you know, it's incredibly important uh, to ensure that we have platforms that are able to, you know, run political ads that are factual and in, 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 in the sense that we're able to provide that opportunity for insurgent candidates uh, to be able to effectively get out their message. And as you mentioned, there really was this issue of these paid political ads from some groups that people couldn't really trace, targeting specific users with misinformation or, or information. How much has things changed in terms of this micro-targeting since then? It's really troubling. You know, with, with Twitter, for instance, even though Twitter has now banned political ads on their platform, so, so, for instance, Sunrise Movement can't run any sort of ads supporting uh, the passage of the Green New Deal because that's in support of a specific legislation. However, you can have corporate ads still run on Twitter from oil companies and gas companies, right, and that will have a completely counter message to uh, what we're trying to promote with, with uh, the grassroots and um, the clean energy uh, activists. So. 
certainly a, a complicated field yeah. to navigate. Thank you for breaking Absolutely. that down for us. Yasmin Tayyabir, Democratic National Committee member, thank you so much.